Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are going to start outsmarting smart shapes. Now, in Finale, smart shapes are elements that are not necessarily musically similar. Uh, slurs, hairpins, trills, octave lines, for example. Uh, but what binds them together is more graphical in nature. So all smart shapes have a beginning point and an end point that get attached to something. So, for example, each end of a slur would get attached to a different note, and each end of a hairpin would get attached to a position in the measure. So that's the commonality. That's what makes a smart shape a smart shape. Uh, again, it's not necessarily uh, musically similar at all. So uh, what can be found in the Smart Shapes tool? That's a good question. I'm glad you asked. So first of all, let's go to the main tool palette and find the Smart Shape tool. And it's this thing that looks like a hairpin over a crescendo, just to illustrate the point that they are not musically similar whatsoever. And when you click on that, you get the Smart Shape palette to appear. And you'll see off the bat kind of um, what kind of elements you can add with Smart Shapes. The other way to tell is if you're looking at my score right now, Everything that's colored red is a smart shape. That's uh, the, the default color for smart shapes. It'll be what will allow you to quickly identify what a smart shape is, right? So we can see some uh, crescendos here and some slurs, even pedal lines, glissando, octave lines, etc. Everything that's red is a smart shape. Now, the main elements within the smart shape tool, let me just walk you through these so you can kind of see what they are. We have a slur, we have a, a dashed slur, we have a decrescendo and crescendo trill. Uh, this one is the extension line to a trill without the TR symbol. Uh, the trill will actually give you the trill plus the extension line. Uh, the 8 for the octave, 15 for two octaves, and then these series of uh, elements here are sort of brackets and lines with different variations, dashed, different hooks, etc. Uh, straight line, just a straight dashed line. Uh, this one here is the glissando. This one uh, Finale calls the bend hat line tool. This is the guitar bend. This is the tab slide. Now this is what you'll use for things like uh, trombone slides and stuff like that. And finally, this is the, uh, the dashed curve tool. And uh, this essentially acts like a slur. The only difference is that this one doesn't have a taper to it as a slur would. Um, so we have sort of three options for slurs. There's a solid slur, a dashed slur, and then a non-tapered dashed slur. All right, dashed curve tool, they call it. And then finally, this last one here is the custom line tool. Now, in addition to all of these elements that you see here, there is an entire list of other elements that exist in the custom lines that you have to access in a different way, which I'll show you eventually in, in a other video. But within that list of elements are things like pedal lines, which you see right here. We can do things like retards with extension lines. You can see at the top of the score on the right-hand side up here. Uh, and a whole other list of things. And you can create your own. You can create your own text with extension lines and stuff like that. This is where we would do it in the custom line tool. All right. So let's talk about actually just get right into adding some things. Now, for certain elements within the smart shapes tool, for example, the slur, the dashed slur, the glissando, the bend hat line, the guitar bend, the tab slide, and the curved dashed curve tool, um, with those particular elements, all you need to do is double click a note to get that element to attach from the note that you double clicked to the next note, if that makes sense. So if I've got the slur highlighted here and I double click this G, it will add a slur to the next note. Double click the B, it will add it to the next note, right? Same thing with the dashed slur, double click. Same thing with the uh, glissando. Actually, let me find a spot where there's more room. How about this one? Even though it's the same note. You'll get the glissando, all right? Uh, so that's how you would do that. Now, obviously, there's going to be cases where you want your slur to go more than just one note. So instead of double-clicking on the note, the way to add it would be to double-click, hold the second click, and then drag to the right. And you'll see as I'm dragging that the, the notes get highlighted, indicating where the end of that slur is going to be, right? And you can go left and right until you've figured out the one you want. And once you've landed on it, just release the mouse to uh, add it, right? So just uh, get rid of that dash there. Uh, double click, hold, drag, and release, all right? Easy enough. Double click, hold, drag. Oops, I didn't do it right. There we go. And release. Double click for a single one. Double click, hold, drag, and release, all right? So again, that works for all the slurs uh, and the lines at the end, or the, the elements at the end of the Smart Shape palette here, except for the, the, uh, the uh, custom line tool, all right? The other elements, like 
the hairpins, for example, you do have to double click and drag regardless. All right, so uh, with the crescendo selected, if I double click here and drag, double click, hold, and drag to extend the line, then you can go left and right to extend and shorten it just like that. All right. Um, now, there are meta tools for most of these, actually, all of these in the uh, palette here, and actually a bunch of them in the custom lines list, which I'll show you later. Um, I'm going to uh, post that list, hopefully, in the video, if I can do that technically. I think I can, uh, somewhere around here. And um, so you can see what they are. But, it, it, you know, some of the basic ones you, you kind of want to probably memorize, and it will be very helpful. S for slur. The two left and right arrows, that those are the keys next to the M key uh, for the hairpins. That makes sense. The T for trill. 8 for 8VA. Eight uh, 1 for 1.5MA, 15MA. Uh, G for gliss. 6 is the bend hat line. B is the guitar bend. And X is the tab slide. All right. And again, there's meta tools for some of the other elements in the custom line tool as well, which is kind of nifty. And you can uh, create your own meta tools as well. Um, now, the advantage of using meta tools is that you don't necessarily have to be in the correct tool. You don't have to have the correct tool highlighted to add it. So if currently, I've got the slur tool uh, highlighted. But if I were to press that arrow key that looks like a crescendo, press it and hold it, and then double click, hold, and drag, I can add the crescendo, despite the fact that the slur is highlighted, right? Uh, same thing if I hit the other arrow, click, drag, double click drag, you can add the, the decrescendo, right? Without having to go into the palette. So the advantage is that you don't have to constantly go back and forth between your score and the smart shape palette like that. And then obviously if we're in a different tool, if we're in the decrescendo tool, I can use the S key for slur to add a slur, right? All right. If you're in the tool, you could also use the S key, but it wouldn't matter because it will work either way. All right, so that's how the meta tools would work. Now, with every element in the Smart Shape uh, palette, there's options for what it gets attached to, right? So for the slur, if you go into the Smart Shape menu, the middle section here will give you three options, attached to beats, attached to notes, attached to note heads, which in the case of the slur is, not, uh, is grayed out, right? So depending on what uh, tool you have selected, some of these options will become available and some will not. So in the case of the slur, Attached to notes is checked, but I can also attach it to beats, which would uh, effectively allow me to just add uh, freely drawn slurs without having to worry about attaching them to beats and stuff like that, which is, uh, you know, it could be handy for dealing with some graphical notation and you don't really have notes to attach it to. Uh, obviously, 99.9% .9 of the time, your slurs are going to want to attach to notes, so you should definitely have that checked. But if you change a tool, for example, the, uh, the crescendo or decrescendo tool, the only option you have is attached to beats. You can't attach a, a crescendo to a note, obviously, right? And there's some other things like the glissando tool will actually allow you to attach to the beat or to a note head. And the difference between the note head and note in this case is that um, with, a, with note heads, you could conceivably add glissando lines uh, to every note of a chord, right? So with note head here, uh, I could do it right here, I think, if I add a glissando from there to there and there to there. So you can get multiple glissandos in the same chord when attached to note head is selected, all right? Um, and then right underneath that, we have an option snap when attaching two beats. Now this will be mostly relevant um, with hairpins, I believe. Uh, if, if I go to a hairpin here and I'm just gonna draw, actually let me redraw this one because this is a good place to do this. I'm just gonna redraw a hairpin and you'll see that as I, slowly move to the right nothing happens until I get about a little bit more than halfway and then it jumps to the next note and then a little halfway jump 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 etc right and so you can kind of see the attachment points to those little dashed lines that's what's that's telling you where in the measure the um, the, the hairpin is attached right and we can attach to notes and nicely we can actually attach to the bar line right there you can see that uh, that that dash line gets attached to the bar line as well, right? And again, with that option checked, it will just it will jump around like that or or snap like that. If you uncheck that, you can actually draw them a little bit more freely, and you can see you can kind of get a hairpin that's sort of halfway between uh, positions, right? Uh, so it depends on how you how you like to work in that regard. I actually prefer to have this unchecked 
for hairpins. Um, uh, it's just a personal preference. Uh, you know, I like to be able to con have a little bit more control over where they uh, end. Uh, so generally I have that unchecked, but let's just recheck that for now. And one other important thing I want to mention, when you add elements, particularly elements like hairpins, um, you will get a, a, a cursor that has an arrow. I hope you can see my cursor right there. It, currently the arrow is pointing downwards towards the guitar staff. If I were to keep going up, and when I cross the halfway, halfway point between the guitar and the clarinet point, that arrow is going to flip, and now it's pointed towards the clarinet. That arrow position is very important because that's going to tell you which uh, staff your uh, hairpin is attached to. Now this comes in play sometimes in situations like this between the guitar and the violin where the guitar notes get very low and very close to the violin part. If I'm not careful and I try and draw a hairpin with that arrow pointed down towards the violin, just like this, you'll see right away that the attachment points uh, get put on the violin staff, above the violin staff, right? It's very obvious to see this. If I were doing this quickly, I might not notice it. I just entered it and go on to something else. I may not notice that I put that uh, hairpin on the violin staff by mistake, right? It's very important because, you know, you could put this in place and make it nice and it looks like it's in the guitar part in the score, right? But if we go to the guitar part, the, uh, the linked part here, you'll see that there's no hairpin in bar three, which is where I put that. And if I go to the violin part, you'll see this uh, rogue uh, crescendo mark that way above in measure three. That's because that uh, crescendo mark is attached to the top of the violin part, right? Um, I mention this because it's very important to get that right because I've seen so many files that have errors like this and it causes a, a, a disaster of a mess. You have to go through and clean those up and, and re-enter them. Um, attaching them, them to the correct staff. So just be careful about that, all right? Uh, a couple other things I want to mention. Uh, all Smart Shapes will have a selection uh, box right here, a little uh, box that you can select to, uh, to do things. And one thing that you can do is uh, right-click to get a contextual menu. And this contextual menu will be exactly the same for every single element within the Smart Shape uh, tool. However, not all of the options here are relevant to the particular um, smart shape that you selected. For example, I selected the uh, crescendo in this case, and obviously anything to do with engraver slurs, avoiding accidentals, which is a slur setting, and direction, which is also a slur setting, makes absolutely no sense for a hairpin. So you can do whatever you want here. Nothing's going to happen. Make horizontal, on the other hand, is, a, is an option available to the uh, the hairpin that's not available to the slur. So just suffice it to say, uh, be aware of this menu and I will show you some things um, uh, in later videos, but uh, not everything in here applies to every element within the Smart Shape tool. Um, one other thing I want to mention is that Smart Shapes will actually play back. Now, what controls the, s the playback of Smart Shape is actually the human playback. So if you have human playback turned on, like I do in this file, it's the standard right here, most of these uh, Smart Shapes have playback effects. So you'll hear crescendos to a degree, you'll hear the glissando, you'll hear these, I've got some slides in the, in the violin, there are the tab slides. Uh, even the guitar bends will play back, although it's a little bit buried in the mix, as you'll hear in a second. Um, and let me just d demonstrate this. There's the gliss, the trill and the flute, and the slide and the violin, right? And even the, even the retard that I have at the end of the measure is actually playing back with human playback. If I turn that off, you're not going to hear any of that, just FYI. And... No gliss in the piano. No trill on the flute, and no slide in the violin, right? And no retard. So just be aware that uh, you know you can get playback from your smart shapes, but you do have to have uh, human playback turned on. All right. And finally, the last thing I want to mention is that with the smart shapes, all of the settings for the smart shapes exist in the smart shape menu up here. We have slur contour, smart shape placement, uh, uh, smart shape options, smart slur options, guitar bend options. 
there is nothing from in the document options that pertain to anything having to do with smart shapes all of the options um, available with smart shapes exist in the smart shape tool in the smart shape menu and I will go through these um, one by one uh, in in the videos to come all right so hopefully this has been a, a good little introductory video to smart shapes and uh, on the starting on the next video I'll get a little bit more in depth particularly with slurs and hairpins and everything and how to adjust them and, and a lot of other things so thanks for watching and uh, come back and we'll do some more outsmarting smart shapes soon See you then.